Steve, um, no, I'm not on the agenda here. Steve was kind enough to insert me in after a request I made, so I just have uh, some very brief remarks to uh, make about Ollie, and uh, from a little bit different perspective than everybody else. Um, and in my short notes to prepare for this uh, little little talk, um, I said, uh, for those who don't know Ollie, and so I need to strike that portion. <laughs> He seems to be one of the best known people in town. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll use a sports metaphor to describe uh, my son. Uh, he leaves it all on the field. Uh, he did so in his athletic endeavors in the San Marino school system, where his skills and efforts were a sight to behold. Um, he wanted a great challenge after uh, graduating with the class of 2011. And unbeknownst to his mother and me, he negotiated a deal with a local army recruiter <laughs> to enlist for an army ranger track. Okay. So anyway, off he went, and after basic training, he was assigned to ranger assessment and selection program, and thereafter ranger school. Uh, he made his way sequentially through the three phases of ranger school. Most rangers don't. Um, and he was the second youngest in his ranger graduating class. Ollie served bravely with the 75th Ranger Regiment, 2nd Battalion, on five tours in Afghanistan. And during that time, I was convinced that he was going to come through his service with nary a scratch. Uh, so when I got a call from his colonel on January 20th that he'd been wounded in action and he was stabilized at Bagram and the medical team was pumping him full of blood, it was probably the most frightening moment of my life thinking he might <clears throat> he might be lost to us. Without going into detail, <clears throat> the life-saving efforts on the part of the medical surgeons on the medevac helicopter may have been the most dramatic casualty save in the history of the U.S. Army. And that's paraphrasing the Vice Chair of the Army, General Dan Allen, who visited Ollie at Walter Reed. <clears throat> Ollie is humble. He simply wants to perform to the best of his abilities And if observers marvel at what he does on life stage, so be it. Um, but clearing the bar he sets for himself is his motivation. He is reluctant to be in the spotlight today, knowing full well that there's no I in team. And the special forces <clears throat> are a phenomenal team as a group, um, deserving your warmth. So with that, I proudly introduce my son, Sergeant Oliver Kent. Thank you all. Mrs. Ives, that, uh, that test got me shot, so thank you for that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> So uh, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, everyone who had a part in organizing this event and everyone who came out. Um, thank you to this community for following my story um, and caring about my recovery and well-being. Uh, thank you for, uh, to my family for supporting me throughout my Army career, um, even though you didn't know <laughs> it was starting when I uh, began it. <laughs> And uh, thank you to the men of 2nd Ranger Battalion for raising me as a man. Um, now, uh, I'm not one to look for a spotlight to stand in. I, uh, I don't ask for any praise for what I've done. 
Um, my only intention when joining the Army was to uh, do a very small part in giving back to a country uh, that provides every single one of us with so much, whether we realize it or not. And uh, I think many of us, myself included, um, take it for granted much of the time. Um, I'd like to talk about resilience uh, in the face of adversity. Because if uh, I have learned anything from my, uh, my injury, um, that would absolutely be the number one thing, is resilience. Um, so after being shot five times uh, out in a remote part of Afghanistan, while massively bleeding into my chest cavity for about half an hour, to get to the medevac helicopter with some sort of chance of survival, I had one choice. And uh, that was to get up and walk from where the, uh, the stretcher broke that was supposed to carry me um, to the helicopter. And so that's what I did. And so with two collapsing lungs and while coughing up blood, I managed to stumble 200 meters to this helicopter while thinking, man, this is the part in the movie where the guy dies. <laughs> Um, but the moral of the story is that uh, we are all stronger and more resilient than we know. Um, so I've had to face a different kind of adversity during the entire recovery process, which is still ongoing. And uh, so I vividly remember the first time they tried to stand me up in the hospital. Uh, it was about three days after my, uh, my traumatic event. And uh, the nurses and a physical therapist came in and said, we have to stand you up. At the time, I couldn't even sit up in bed. I had three different tubes coming out of my chest cavity. And uh, so I said, you're joking, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they weren't. <laughs> so uh, I'm a guy that's used to putting up 360 pounds over his head in the weight room. So barely being able to stand is a pretty strange feeling. Um, it took every ounce of my strength in me to manage to stand that day for about 10 seconds. And uh, I collapsed back onto the bed. So the next day, I was able to walk for the first time. The day after that, a little bit further and a little bit further. Until now, with a continued effort and amazing support from uh, both military physical therapists and uh, also Brandon Williams from San Marino Athletic Club, I've achieved a pretty high level of fitness and uh, almost comparable to where I once was. Um, so, if I impart anything to you all, it would be that everyone has their own battles to fight, whether it shows on the outside or not. And. Uh, what I say to that, again, is we're all stronger than we know, and thank you. Thank you very much, Ollie. I we're going to have a little bit, I know we're running over, um, but if you just be a little patient, I'm going to allow, please go ahead and sit down. Uh, Ollie's graciously agreed to answer some questions if you have any. So uh, let's, does anybody have a question? Yes, Mike. Ollie, what's next? <laughs> uh, so later uh, next month I go to South Africa and then Namibia and then all throughout Europe for about five months um, just to do some traveling it's always something I've wanted to do so uh, I'm calling it my vision quest I'm gonna go find myself <laughs> and uh, after that I will be attending Santa Monica College to begin a pre-med track and if that goes well um, hopefully transfer to uh, a four-year college and then medical school after that. Thank you. Another question? Uh, yes, Mary. I, I think I heard that your, that your heart stopped. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and so, uh, one of the gunshots to my upper left chest uh, shattered on a rib, and um, so that sent fragments all throughout my uh, my left lung, um, pierced a couple of major arteries in there, and um, so 
because I bled so much into my chest, they had to uh, restart my heart um, because of the blood loss. And so it was a pretty radical procedure. Yeah, as they were landing one of the medevac helicopters and transferring me to a plane. Yes, Andy. What, what can you tell us about the mission that you were on? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> We are uh, we're sent out to kill or capture a high-value target in southeastern Afghanistan. Very That's all I got for you, Mr. Barth. <laughs> <laughs> Glover, you have a question. Uh, when did you figure out you wanted to join the Armored Rangers? <laughs> do, do you want me to ask your parents to leave? <laughs> I think this whole army uh, military thing got instilled in me in a, at a pretty young age. Uh, my parents will tell you, I, and Jennifer, my little sister, I watched the military channel and the history channel just about every day in my childhood, so <laughs> I think I was being groomed for it subconsciously. <laughs> so uh, I started seriously thinking about it um, late in my junior year of high school, if that answers your question. Fritz. What are your plans for the immediate future? Uh, like I said, I'm going to uh, start traveling. Um, also, the Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo organization has uh, been kind enough to offer my dad and I a position on the uh, stagecoach on, uh, during the Rose Parade. So. Yes? So how, how fast can you run now? <laughs> Not as fast as I used to be able to. I <laughs> uh, could do about a 650 mile. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> 650 mile. <laughs> I've never been shot and I can't even get close to that. 